Hello and welcome to another video. My name is CJ the Populist New Yorker and today we're going to be looking at the 2022 midterm Senate map and analyzing why Republicans are not only very likely to hold the Senate but actually expand their majority in the Senate. So please be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this video. So we're going to be analyzing the 12 key races that are going to be taking place in the 2022 midterms and uh, figuring out based on historical trends and the turnout and also the way the state has been moving, which I guess is a historical trend, uh, how these races are likely to turn out. And it also depends on a, a variety of factors, whether the Republican and or Democratic incumbent is running, uh, etc., etc. I don't really want to say this is more of a uh, early prediction as more of a, a what-if scenario that could happen, how many seats Republicans could theoretically get in the Senate. So we're going to start off going west to east here with the state of Nevada. As of right now in the 2020 election, Joe Biden is ahead in Nevada by 2.4 percentage points. Uh, that is Hillary Clinton's margin in the state from 2016. I, I think Joe Biden will probably increase his majority in Nevada, but I don't know by a whole lot. Either way, if Nevada does shift to the left, it'll be a very, very minor shift. The fact that Nevada was as close as it is now is quite remarkable considering polls uh, had Biden up six or seven points, and that was a state I didn't really even go over t uh, very much when it came to the polls. But the state of Nevada has been trending more Republican as the years have gone on. From 2008 uh, to now, the state of Nevada has been trending more right-wing, uh, or you could say back more to the right, as it used to be in the early 2000s. Um, if we look at the last time this Senate seat was up, it was against Catherine Cortez Masto, who uh, we don't know if she's running again or not, but let's just say for the sake of this video, she is running again. And she versed her Republican challenger, Joe Heck, to replace former Democratic leader Harry Reid. Um, this race was relatively close, mostly due to the presence of third parties. Um, I don't really know which way this race would have swung without them, but I think there's a 95% chance Catherine Cortez Masto would have won anyway. Uh, Joe Heck was a decent candidate, although some people say he didn't tie himself to Trump enough. Uh, others say that's the reason why he lost. But he lost by around the same margin that Trump won the state, 2.4 percentage points. So that is really interesting to analyze. Uh, also, it's interesting to note that he won Washoe County. No Republican has won statewide in Nevada without winning Washoe County, at least in the past couple decades. So in order for a Republican Senate candidate to win the state of Nevada, they're going to have to win Washoe County, and they're probably going to have to run up the margins here in Clark County. Uh, as it's uh, clear by this result, 40% of the vote in Clark is not going to cut it. You'd need at least 44 or 45%, uh, kind of like what Donald Trump got. But he underperformed as well because Joe Biden won Washoe County and overperformed in all of these rural counties, which have small populations, but it adds up. Carson City, same thing. Small population, but it adds up in the long term. So Republicans really need to eye for around 45-46% in Clark County. And in a midterm year, that is very, very possible, given the low turnout. So let's just say for um, hypothetical sake, sake that Republicans are able to narrowly eke out a victory in Nevada. They're at 45 seats. Uh, let's go to the state of Arizona now. Um, the last time this Arizona Senate seat was up was... Whoop, in 2016, uh, this was the seat that uh, Mark Kelly is now occupied. It was a special election due to the fact that John McCain died in office. Uh, the 2018 result was for Jeff Flake's seat. So this is for John McCain's seat. He was able to win this seat comfortably by around 13 point, points against Representative Kirk Patrick. Um, kind of surprising considering the state of Arizona was much closer in the general but I think it's mostly due to the fact that John McCain, uh, even though he was underwater, he's a very well-known figure in the state of Arizona. Uh, as of the 2020 election results, Joe Biden has won the state of Arizona by just 0.3%, 0.4%, maybe at most 0.5% when all is said and done. So a very narrow margin. This is very likely to change. Um, if we look at the Senate results... Um, for the state of Arizona. Mark Kelly has won a more convincing lead. It looks like Mark Kelly is going to win the state of Arizona by around three points or so. Uh, well, a little under three points, around 2.4 uh, or something like that. But still a pretty 
convincing lead compared to Joe Biden's lead in the state. So obviously Mark Kelly is more favorable than Joe Biden in the state of Arizona. He did really well in places like Maricopa County, Pima County. These are areas that you need to do well in in order to actually win the state. There were no third parties either, so there was no third party effect. There were only two people on the ballot, uh, which arguably made the result a little bit closer in a lot of key counties, specifically Maricopa County possibly. Um, a third party candidate could have dwindled uh, Mark Kelly's lead or it could have hurt Martha McSally as well. Either way, I think the direction of this seat will depend on the popularity of its incumbent, Mark Kelly. But again, for the sake of this video, we're going to tilt it as uh, red since it is a very possible flip. Uh, Colorado, uh, I just left it off because it's not safe, but I'm going to put it as uh, a lean uh, seat for the Democrats as of right now, and lean is anywhere from two to six. I don't see this seat flipping unless there's um, extraordinary circumstances. Uh, the incumbent, uh, Michael Bennett, has won this seat two times in a row, both during, well, one during a uh, Democratic, uh, excuse me, a Republican wave year in 2010, and then secondly, in a year that Donald Trump won the national vote, but Hillary Clinton won the state. Obviously, he outperformed Hillary uh, quite a bit. Uh, in Colorado. Uh, he's expected to run again, and I don't think this race is going to be too competitive. Um, so I definitely going to favor him off the bat. I don't think Colorado is a seat that Democrats uh, have to worry too much about. If we go back to the 2020 election results, we can see that the presidential election in the state of Colorado was abysmally terrible for Republicans. As of right now, Joe Biden is leading Donald Trump by nearly 14 points in the state of Colorado, uh, a terrible, terrible margin uh, for Republicans. And I think that even in an off year is going to have an effect. It just shows how much the state has shifted toward the Democrats. And I know some people point to the example of Mark Kirk winning uh, the Illinois Senate seat in 2010 as a reason that well, Colorado could technically still be in play. Uh, technically, but you would need an extraordinary scandal against uh, Michael Bennett, Tom Kirk, Mark Kirk rather, his opponent had a, um, a very big corruption scandal, and that's the reason he eked out a victory in 2010. Uh, I don't see that playing out in a state like Colorado, so we can already fill that state out. Uh, Iowa, we're not going to talk too much about. Uh, in 2016, this was Chuck Grassley's seat. He won by 35 points. He's always won all of his races by very, very large, convincing margins. Um, I don't really think that's going to change. Uh, however... Uh, I may have misspoke. I don't think he's actually running again. Yeah, so he's still undecided. However, even with him being undecided, I would still favor the Republican to win the state of Iowa overall, just because it's going to be a red wave year. Uh, I don't think the margin necessarily going to be tilt. I'm just filling these in as tilt for hypothetical Republican flips or holds. Uh, however, I do think Republicans have a really good, good shot at winning Iowa. President Trump won the state of Iowa by 8.3. He won it by a similar margin last time. And Joni Ernst, who was polling uh, pretty poorly in the state, uh, mostly losing to Greenfield, actually ended up winning very convincingly in the Senate. She won the seat by around six points. So she won a very convincing victory in the state of Iowa. So I think that alone is good news for Republicans. The state of Wisconsin is another very interesting seat. Uh, I'm not actually sure if Ron Johnson has said he's going to run again. Uh, it's not known, but he's a potential candidate. Uh, apparently Scott Walker also is. This is a Republican seat. This is a seat that Republicans are going to need to hold to win the Senate. In a 2022 year with a Biden administration that likely won't get a lot done, I think the state of Wisconsin will be a hold for Republicans. And again, this is not my actual prediction because again, we don't really have any specific numbers to really dive into here, but I'm just doing a hypothetical matchup. Uh, Ohio, if Rob Portman runs, I don't even think it'll be close. If we go back to 2016, uh, Rob Portman won all of his races by, you know, 20 points or so. For some reason, he's a very popular senator in the state of Ohio, uh, even only losing places like Columbus by very tiny margins, around six point, winning Dayton and even Cincinnati by very comfortable margins. Akron, uh, you know, the only place he was voted under 30% was, uh, 40% rather, was Cleveland. So that really goes to show you that Portman has wide bipartisan appeal. So that race could relatively be a safe margin if he does decide to run again. Uh, now we can look at the state of New Hampshire. 
Uh, interestingly enough, New Hampshire does tend to buck a lot of uh, political trends. Uh, Kelly Ayot, who may actually, she is a uh, potential candidate for the Senate in New Hampshire. She was the incumbent in 2016. She lost by 0.1% to Maggie Hassan, or uh, roughly 1,000 votes, so a very, very narrow race in the state of New Hampshire. Um, if she runs again, she does have a shot. It is the midterms. There is going to be a lower turnout, higher turnout among Republicans, but sometimes New Hampshire does buck political trends. And, you know, again, Jean Shaheen, the incumbent senator in 2020, won her race by 15 points. Uh, she didn't lose a single county in New Hampshire, which is really remarkable. At the same time, Republican Governor Chris Sununu won by West Virginia margins in the state. So New Hampshire is a very uh, ticket-splitting state. It's also a state that bucks uh, national trends. So as of right now, I would just leave that as possibly just tilt Democrat. Uh, until we know what's really going on there. But again, as you're going to see, that won't really affect the Republican majority too much. Uh, Pennsylvania is another state that's going to be key to Republicans if they want to actually hold the Senate. Uh, of course, they're going to need to win in Pennsylvania. In 2016, Pat Toomey won his race over uh, Katie McGinty by around 1.5 percentage points. Uh, Toomey's strength was the Philly suburbs. He won Bucks County by around six, uh, five points. He won Chester County by two, and he won Berks County pretty convincingly. Um, his weaker spots, of course, were the suburbs. Uh, sorry, the rural areas. I'm all mixed up today. Uh, and, of course, western Pennsylvania. But those weaknesses were offset in urban counties where Pat Toomey overperformed. You know, he even did a lot worse than Trump in Lackawanna County, which is home to Scranton. But it didn't matter because he did well enough in the suburbs to hold the state. And it's very likely um, that the next Republican uh, will do better in the suburbs than President Trump. Uh, Pat Toomey has declared that he is not running again for his seat. So this is a much more wide open seat. And if Democrats run a candidate like uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Fetterman, for example, uh, Republicans could be in a little bit of trouble. But again, the overall trends during a midterm year are uh, favorable to Republicans since Joe Biden will be the president. Uh, so Pat Toomey is not going to run. So that means another Republican is going to have to uh, somehow appeal to suburbs enough to win the state back and also uh, be able to run up the margins in rural areas. Now, if we look at the 2020 election in Pennsylvania, Joe Biden is on track to win the state by around 1.2. Again, it could be as high as 1.5 or something, but either way, it's not going to be higher than two points. So Pennsylvania is still very, very much in play. This was a state that was very close in 2020, uh, which is why I think it's more likely than not that whoever the Republican is will probably win the state of Pennsylvania based on this fact alone. Uh, Joe Biden does not really have much of a mandate going into the 2022 midterms. His administration is probably not going to get a lot done. Even a coronavirus vaccine, I don't think is going to help him uh, with the kind of gridlock that we're going to see in Washington due to a divided government. So I think that fact alone, Republicans will benefit. The state of North Carolina, this is a state that stayed red in 2020. I doubt it's going to be uh, that competitive. Although uh, I should rephrase, uh, North Carolina is always pretty competitive. It's one of those states that even in off years, uh, Republicans don't usually landslide the state. It usually tends to get pretty close. But it's also a uh, state that splits its ticket a lot. You know, uh, Richard Burr won the state by six points in 2016. Donald Trump won it by 3.6. Roy Cooper, the Democrat, won it by 0.2. So this is a state that is more inclined to split ticket for their candidates. I think this is definitely a lean seat. For Republicans, I think this is almost a guarantee. I say almost because anything could happen, but I think Republicans are more likely than not to win the North Carolina seat. Uh, Georgia, we're not going to talk too much about because I'd have to wait until the special elections to really gauge this race at the moment. But let's just say, for example, that Georgia, uh, both seats go to the Republicans narrowly. Again, it's tilt, not because that's what at the margin I think it is. I just think these are hypothetical flips. Republicans would have 54, uh, 53 seats to 46. Marco Rubio, I think, will have no problem w running uh, for re-election if he does, in fact, run in Florida. And Marco Rubio is going to run in Florida, so I think this seat is going to be a slam dunk for him, especially with President Trump's margins in places like Miami-Dade. Uh, also keep in mind in the 2016 election, Marco Rubio won his race very handedly. Uh, he won it by eight points. 
Uh, Florida tends to favor incumbents, although with uh, Senator Bill Nelson, that was not the case. But it, for the most part, they tend to like incumbents. And Marco Rubio won areas that uh, Donald Trump could only dream of winning them by, you know, winning Jacksonville by 16 points, uh, winning a lot of counties by convincing margin, only losing Miami-Dade by 11. I think he'll do a lot better this time due to the Hispanic shift toward the Republican Party. Uh, so that would put Republicans at 54 seats to 46 seats. This is what I think is the most likely scenario for the Senate, or, or one of the most likely. We could probably pick off a state, maybe like North Carolina, let's say, if Mark Kelly is uh, fairly popular, which I think he is. Uh, we're also denying uh, Republicans two states that could possibly go to them in a more rare situation, Colorado and New Hampshire, although I think it's super unlikely. Uh, but the battle map does not look very well for Democrats. Neither does the House map, which is why I think 2022 uh, Democrats are going to perform pretty poorly in a lot of results, similar to how they did in 2010 and 20, well, in 2014 in the Senate. I don't think the House is going to be as much of a blowout in favor of Republicans, but I could be wrong. I think Lisa Murkowski's Alaska seat is going to be safe, especially if she does run again. Uh, we don't know that for sure. I mean, I could check. I'm not an, I don't know which incumbents for 100% sure are running. Oh, she is running. Okay, so if she does end up actually winning uh, her primary, uh, which she probably will, I think she's very likely to win her re-election by a safe margin. Uh, so anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Um, you know, again, we could flip probably a couple seats, like maybe one of Georgia's seats, the Warnock seat, even both of Georgia's seats. Uh, if we even flip those and possibly give the Republicans a state like Arizona and give Democrats a state like Nevada. Republicans still hold the majority. Uh, but I think it's more likely than not that the Georgia races do go to Republicans. So at the end of the day, Republicans are almost guaranteed a majority in 2022. Uh, the, pretty, the picture does not look very pretty for Democrats, uh, but it is a midterm year, and this is how midterm years usually trend. Uh, and when I make my predictions, I usually follow the historical trends, the data, and in a lot of cases, the polling as well. Uh, so this is, anyway... Uh, Republicans are very likely to hold the Senate. That's going to be all for today's video. Please leave a like below if you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any more videos. Comment down below your thoughts. Uh, as always, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.